I think just the first three series, they were able to just move the ball pretty much at will against you guys. What was different in you know, those first three series compared to the rest of the game? Um, I say later on in the game, we finally figured out, you know, what, I mean, we knew what was coming. Um, but, you know, it's kind of, I have to go back and watch the film and really be able to see and, you know, talk it up with the coaches for me to be able to say what it was. You were playing at a real fast pace. Did that catch you guys up guard at all? No, <laughs> just watch the film. You can see that the tempo is going to come. Um, you know, that was, that was, that was expected. Zach, but how disappointed are you guys in general? How do you get yourself back up? Well, um, you know, disappointment is, is, for some guys, I feel like he's all the way through the roof, and other guys, I don't know how they feel. I can't really gauge everybody on the team, but you know, some guys you really see on their faces. Um, I'm sure everybody has it in the pit of their stomach. We all, you know, want to be great, um, but the only way we can bounce back is focus on the next. Pit. You know, we can't, we can't, like Coach Diaz said, we can't just come up here and talk about goals and you know, and all think about the future and everything. All we have is what's right in front of us, um, and that only goes so far. So we have to beat Duke. And after that, we have to beat whoever's next. And it just keeps on going. That's, that's the only way that we'll ever be able to uh, get to the mountaintop. Now that, you face Dylan, now that you face Dylan, what are your thoughts on him? How tough is he to bring down? I mean, you know, that's, that's, that's he's a good player. Um, we saw it on film. Sorry. We saw it on film. Um, we know what to expect from him as well. You know, he's a hard runner. Um, probably might not get the chance to see him again until in the future, but you know, it is what it is. Zach, what, what do you guys do now, some of the older players on this team, the veterans, to make sure the younger guys don't get discouraged by what's happening right now? Um, same thing that Coach Diaz said, it's all about keeping the mentality of who's up next. Um, and, you know, I, I, some people, you know, if you're outside the program, it can really sound like, you know, whatever, who's up next. It's, it's just, it doesn't really seem like it holds any weight. But, um, you know, to the guys that take it seriously, it means a lot. Whatever, you know, direction we choose to step, um, we're, we're doing it wholeheartedly. So we're preparing for the next week, you know, as, as hard as we can. It's going to be a really tough climb to, to get into the ACC now, Virginia. I think has to lose twice out of four games. Um, you know, how does that affect the issue mentality? If that doesn't happen, what what do you play for? Or, you know? Um, well, it, it, there are a lot of guys on the team that, a lot of guys in football in general, um, that have come from winning programs in high school and you know just been winning all their life, and this is really the first time they're getting a chance to see the downswing, I guess, if, if I can call it that. I mean, we lost two in a row just now, so I don't know what else to call it. But um, how do we keep them up? I guess it would be really just talking to them, talking to them about. You can't tell them somebody just to keep their head up. You have to keep their mentality just to work. You know, even when you're not enjoying the game as much, you still have to maintain that. You have to you have to cultivate that love for the game, even if it, it's not all you know sunshine and smiles at the moment. You know, I like to hit people. I like to run around. I like to make tackles. I like to play the game for the, for the love of the game. Um, and so it's just making sure that the rest of the guys on the team have that same mentality. I think that's the best way to go about it. How about as far as keeping, keeping guys from pointing fingers at each other and keeping the unity of the team? Because sometimes when teams start losing, you know what I mean, things start going bad everywhere. That's easy. Um, I think there's more fingers being pointed from the outside. We hear things, you know, people tag us in comments on social media here and there, and uh, family members even want to, you know, just anybody who's not in this locker room um, when, it, when, it, when it goes down. Um, we'll, we'll be pointing fingers, but I, I, within ourselves, the focus has always been control what you can control. Um, you hear it on the sideline, you hear it anytime anything goes wrong and when things are going right, you still just have to control what you can control through your job, your assignment, the best of your ability. How frustrating is Last that for you guys right? to hear even family members getting on you guys or fans or whatever? I know you try to drown it out, but it, it's got to, at some point, does it get through? Um, not at all. I mean, not for me. Uh, I haven't really, you know, the guys that I, I'm around in the locker room, you know, my locker right in front of Navar Donaldson and over I got Shaq and, and Mike, you know, I'm like, I'm hearing only conversation from guys that are with the same mindset that I have. Um, and so because of that, I guess, you know, um, it's really easy just to keep things out. You know, I, I've been hearing a lot of things since I started playing football in eighth grade. Like it's just, you're always going to hear comments, but you play the game because you love the game, not because of what other people are telling you. So you can't be discouraged just because of what other people are telling you. Great. Thank you, Zach. Thank you, Zach. Thank you, Zach. Thank you so much.